I got a real special guest here. His name's Ryan. He is actually a battalion chief with the Bear County Fire Department. Yes, sir. This vehicle we're looking at here is a Bear County Fire Rescue vehicle, and being a battalion chief with the County Fire Rescue, you know exactly what your needs are. So I appreciate you taking a minute to talk to me. I know there's some very unique things about these trucks, and I'd love to hear what we're looking at. On the unique side, this is probably one of the best trucks to look at. So this is a 2017 Pierce Velocity. It's built for Bear County Emergency Services District Number 2, based on the west side of San Antonio. This truck is, is a uh, Velocity chassis. It's, got a, it's powered by a DD13 engine. It's a uh, 505 horsepower uh, Detroit diesel engine. It has Allison transmission on it. It's a 1500 GPM pump. And it is CAFs and has a Husky 12 foam system on it, or Husky 10 foam system on it, excuse me. Okay, so what would the ideal... Let's say you're going to dispatch this truck out to a scene. What would be the most typical call that a truck like this would be dispatched to? So we've kind of changed our roles at that agency with, with Bear County where we're doing an all-hazard response. So this being the all-hazard conference, this was a, a, a great idea to have this mm -hmm. truck here. So this truck is built to handle all hazards, whether it be vehicle extrication, structural firefighting, um, everyday medical calls this is a typical typical truck that we're going to roll out for pretty okay. much every response that we make oh it's kind of the new universal truck right? right and it's going to probably have all the equipment you need to handle just about any type of structure fire uh, do you send this thing out to like a brush fire or anything like that as well this will travel in tandem with a brush truck similar to like mm -hmm. on the sitting garden side our skeeter brush truck mm -hmm. that you looked at earlier so this truck is going to t travel in tandem to a brush fire this truck's not going to go off road but the crew will supplement the crew that's coming out on duty Absolutely. with it one thing I've noticed has been a lot more common on some of these is this little rotator light here. <laughs> Can you tell me a little bit about this? Because this looks like we're bringing back the 70s, but what is the deal with this light we got here? So this is a rotary light. They're starting to make their, their way back into the, uh, popu the popular side. The fire department's trying to bring back a lot of the tradition side. So these were very, very popular in the Northeast still. Um, they haven't really left, but it's just a solid, steady burning light. Mm -hmm. On this particular truck, it's red, white, and blue as it spins. Uh, when the air brake is depressed, the light is actually going to spin and rotate as it's going. Okay. So we, we kind of wanted to bring back a little bit of tradition with it, so we brought back the roto ray, and we also brought back a bell. Well, that's really cool. So does this have the, the and that looks like what I'm thinking, is that the old wind-up siren? That, that is a friction siren, or, or, the, or a federal cube. These actually have a motor that's set up behind it. Okay. So you depress uh, in this truck. It's they're either a push button or a pedal switch activate, activated. Okay. And uh, this truck has got an actual push button inside. It's a little gel formed. Push so you you hold it down and that thing's going to wind up as you go. Correct. Okay, that's really cool. The unique thing about this truck also it has a set of uh, train horns as well. So oh. we didn't go with the regular Grover air horns. Mm -hmm. We actually went with a set of train horns. So you got that deep, deep sound you want to it. <laughs> Do you have front and rear train horns on this one? No, just on the front. Just on the front. Most important things in any type of first response is when you're clearing intersections. Yes. So let's take a look at what you did to the side of this truck to make that safer for you all. So we are now looking at the side of this truck. Again, one of the most hazardous times for any type of law enforcement, first response, fire rescue, is when you're clearing an intersection. That's when you're driving through an intersection, responding to you know some type of code, there's a problem. And visibility during clearance of an intersection is probably the single most important time you need it, right, while you're responding. So what do you got set up here to help with that? So on the emergency, the emergency lighting side of things, we set things at low level, mid level, and a high level, and of course facing into the intersection. So on the front, starting at the front bumper, we did offset M6 lights off of, off the front. Those are red and white. Those are, we try to do a uh, off color mm -hmm. on the intersection so it's not a common color. Everything else on the lower level is going to be a red and blue light. Everything that's up top is going to be a, mm -hmm. a solid red light. And you try to extend those to the very front and the very back of the rig, right? right. Especially at night so you can... And the highest clear. and widest as well. Absolutely. So let's take a look at this control panel over here because I know nothing about this. And <laughs> this to me is Greek. I have absolutely no idea what I would do if I was thrown into a situation where somebody said, hey, can you man that? What do you do here? What am I looking at? So this is going to be a 1500 waters pump, 1500 GPM waters pump. Each individual valve itself is color coded. So the way that we do our nozzles as well, um, purple is you're going to be your front discharge so the nozzle the bail of the nozzle where we open and close the nozzle is going to be closed with purple it's going to have a purple bail on okay uh, 
Uh, same thing with the yellow cross lays that are going to be here. These are going to be your speed lays, one, two, three. Passenger side discharge, it won't have, but all of these are our pre-connected lines. And then also our, uh, our red line, which is going to be back here. Okay. Man, so what is new on a truck like this versus, say, one that was 10 years old that you couldn't get 10 <laughs> years ago, but you now get... I mean, this thing to me looks like you probably couldn't get that 10 years ago. Uh, this is the, the, the Husky foam system. So we have, we, we've gone through the Husky 3, Husky 12, Husky 10. This is a Husky 10. So this truck will actually pump 10 gallons of foam a minute as, okay. as, uh, at, its, at its highest capacity. So with this, it goes with our CAF system. So mm -hmm. CAF is a compressed air foam system. So this has a compressor uh, will flip on. Uh, it will basically mix air, or a foam solution with air, make the, the water wetter. Okay. So here's a question that I know somebody's going to ask me if I don't ask you. Okay. What scenario would you use foam versus water and water versus foam? So, of course, with modern times research and science and everything that goes with it, <clears throat> technology has come to prove that that you know water does its job it's great foam we can add foam to make water extend itself a little bit better so it's, the soap particles are actually going to break down and get into the debris that's mm -hmm. inside of a, a fire a little bit better uh, so calves for the most part we're going to use it for what we would refer to as a room and contents fire uh, it's one to two rooms if it's a very large fire and it requires a lot of water at that point honestly calves isn't going to do a whole heck of a lot you know this is to you know a, a fire that's got a good start on it we can get in there and knock it down and, and, and go to work and take care of business absolutely um, so that's <clears throat> uh, not going to substitute gpms versus btus it's not going to cool mm -hmm. the fire a lot faster but it's going to help uh in, inhibit anything that does start absolutely re restart so while I got you, I did have one final question, and it is related to the fact that Pierce, who is probably the number one provider of fire truck chassis out there, mm -hmm. has now gone to offering the Ford 6.7 liter Power Stroke as an option for, I don't think all their trucks, I don't think you can get it in a truck like this, but no. you can get it in a few of their different configurations. It's in our Sabre, Sabre line of chassis. Your Sabre line. So traditionally, that truck came with a Cummins engine? Yes, it came with, and, with the Cummins line. And you still have the option for that, or is you it still switched completely? Option. You still okay. do have that as, as an option. Um, you're going to get a, a, a Cummins L9 series or uh, pretty much what any other manufacturer is going to have available. Okay. And then our, our Power Stroke, which is a, a very popular, cost-effective option for us for, uh, okay. for uh, budget-conscious fire departments. Okay, so that's basically a way to get a diesel, of course, in these yes. trucks at a lower cost than the larger Cummins engine platform that most people might expect to see in these trucks yes as far as reliability at this point and i told him before i started recording i wanted him to be completely honest about his opinion on the 6.7 liter power stroke um the first question i want to ask which i didn't tell you i was going to ask you is do you prefer the cummins platform in the pierce truck or do you prefer the power stroke or i i know you said it's cost conscious but let's say for a department that doesn't have budget in mind would mm -hmm. you say that the cummins would still be the preferred diesel uh i wouldn't say necessarily that it would be the preferred in all honesty it's when when we go to build a fire truck it's it's whatever the fire department wants it's their hot rod is, is, is our common saying it's, it's your hot rod you tell us what you want in it here's what we know that's been successful here's what we know that hasn't been so successful we're not going to plug one way or the other. It's mm -hmm. it's going to be preference for what the customer wants. And if they want it to be cost effective and they want a Sabre chassis, we're going to send them towards that Ford side. Okay. On a um, particularly on this chassis, we went with the DD13, which is that Detroit. Mm -hmm. Pierce is the only manufacturer that can throw a Detroit into a fire truck. Okay. On the Cummins side, you know we can do an L series all the way up to an X series, whichever whichever engine engine line that you guys would want. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also have the uh, availability for that for the Power Stroke as well. In your opinion, what you seen does it seem as if the power stroke's been holding up well have you had many warranty related issues i mean are, have you seen basically more issues related to the power stroke than say if somebody throws a cummins in there uh in all honesty in, in what my personal experiences have been I've, I've driven one of the test pumpers that pierce has in appleton wisconsin uh, i was a little hesitant going into it but i was actually very well impressed mm -hmm. uh, the, the the truck actually it, I wasn't expecting it to have as much get up and go. It had a thousand gallons of water on it. I was uh, I was pleasantly surprised how how well the truck actually performed. So carrying a thousand gallons of water, taking it up some of the big hills there in downtown Appleton, it was it actually 
did very, very well. Very and then cool. on retrospect, a lot of the medium duty trucks that you're, you're going to find out there that have a four chassis on them, they have the same exact engine in them. Mm-hmm. The same thing on the Duramax side with, on the Chevy, on GMC products. Mm-hmm. You're going to have the similar size engine running all of those. Uh, it, I believe I'm also on the Sterling products as well. Mm-hmm. So I can't imagine you have any preference towards Ford because it's probably, when it comes to a fire truck, on the weaker side of the offerings that you can throw in a fire truck. Mm-hmm. It's more cost effective. It's more cost effective, yeah. Now, just to make sure that there's no bias here, what is your favorite diesel engine? If you were going to say, I have a favorite diesel brand, diesel manufacturer, gives me the fuse problems, what would you say, what would you put in your personal truck if you could put any diesel product in there? My personal vehicle, I do have a, a, a Power Stroke F-250. Okay. Um, if I could put an engine in there, it would probably be a Detroit mm-hmm. uh, engine inside of a any particular Ford truck, uh, you know, go with the King Ranch, if you will. I don't have mm-hmm. that personally, but if I could do that, that's where we're probably You're a Detroit, Detroit fan. Yeah. Well, naturally, because you spec this truck out and you threw a Detroit <clears> in it, too, <throat> so. Well, the San Antonio Fire Department has had a very good luck with having it. My, my old fire department in the Houston area, they had a lot of good luck with uh, the Cummins X-Series. Mm-hmm. They didn't have as much luck with the Detroits. In terms of the fleet size that Bear County has. Can you give us a little bit of information about the Bear County Fire Department in general? So Bear County Emergency Services District number two, we have about 40 vehicles. Uh, We range, we have 14 frontline pumpers, I believe. Uh, We have Mm -hmm. eight brush trucks, one tender or tanker, whichever way you put it. Mm -hmm. It's not an airplane, but it's a a 3,000 gallon tanker. Um, We run multiple squad vehicles and administrative vehicles uh, Mm -hmm. that were respond you know every day outstanding so. what about entire bear county fire department bear county by the way guys is san antonio i mean san antonio is in bear county within the bear county services uh, system i would say we would probably have over 200 vehicles collectively between all of the all of the agencies and the emergency mm-hmm. service district within the within the department itself. so typical firefighter loaded up with gear and an oxygen tank how much weight do they generally carry on them uh, depends on the spec on the gear and the air pack, but uh, go anywhere from 40 to 60 pounds. And especially having to climb stairs, multiple mm-hmm. flights of stairs, kind of uh, lets you know what these guys have to go through and what they need to be prepared for anytime they're responding, especially in a city like San Antonio mm-hmm. or an area where you have skyscrapers. You have buildings that, you know, elevators are probably not going to be the, the primary use if there there's a f- structural fire going on, so you guys have to climb stairs and, man... Definitely appreciate the type of work you do in the service. Maybe I can actually make it out to uh, Bear County and go on a ride along one day. Come on. (laughs) Perfect, guys. I appreciate it again. Thank you.